Okay, I'm going to start off with one thing I like about the 49ers. Their seasons, and especially the last one we just had, are really exciting. Yeah. They, every week, they produce a phenomenal story. Mm-hmm. And I have to say, from the point of view of a former journalist, my God, would I, I would love to have written about them <coughs> this season, Iggy. I yeah. mean, they, three different quarterbacks, and the third one turns out to be the best. Yeah. What a story. Yeah. The fact how they started so slow, mm-hmm. and, you, and you're thinking, ah, nah, 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 you got, they got a problem, maybe the coach. Well, they still might have a problem with the coach, but then they win all those games in a row, and now you think, oh, boy, they're the team to beat, and then that really sad, dramatic ending. <laughs> so, Iggy, what I would say is I don't know that there's a, a team in the league that I would prefer to cover as a journalist in the 49ers because there's always something cooking. They're the most interesting team in American sports. Because, and agree. I'll say, like, as soon as they become champions, they become less interesting. Although the goal is to, beca- is to become champions, not interesting. But the Warriors are four-time champions. They're not nearly as interesting as the 49ers. No. The Chiefs aren't nearly as interesting as the 49ers. What makes the Niners so dramatic and interesting is the fact that they're right on the precipice of getting the Super Bowl and they haven't gotten it. And so the conversation with them is, what is this one thing that they could possibly change to get over the hump? It's just one thing. And the Niners, at least for the last four years, have been kind of staunch in saying they don't need to change anything. They're there. They're already in the promised land. Like, no, you're a quarter mile away. You just have to, you just have to go a quarter mile. So that's a fun conversation to have every year. How can they get it, there? But in addition, I agree with it. How can, the overriding question, of course, is how can they get there? Yeah. But in addition, week by week, the story. Yes. The yes. story changes every week. Right. So if I were a columnist writing about it, I wouldn't write about anything else but them. I wouldn't write about the Warriors while no. the, the Niners were. I wouldn't write about the Giants. No. No one writes about the A's. So I, I, I just, every week, there's like a new phenomenal chapter in a great novel. I love and it's it. Like, agree. And they're a relevant team. They're a contender. They're a great roster, but they still don't have the quarterback position settled. So it's like, that's the most dramatic thing. What are they going to do? A quarterback. That's always fun to talk about. And we're not talking about a a crappy team. We're talking about the best team. So this is a very high stakes question. What are they going to do? A quarterback. (laughs) It's fun. And they could have a, they they could have a freaking competition this year. It'd be a lot of fun. I love it. So what we're saying is not only were they great to cover this last season, I'm already looking forward to next season. Me I too. think, I mean, for example, can they get off to a reasonably good start and win a few games at the beginning? I mean, right away, there's a question, right? Yes. yes. And who's the quarterback? And is the quarterback well enough? And can the quarterback bring them to whatever the mm-hmm. next level is? Iggy, this is, it's, it's a, a, a thriller. If this yeah. were a novel, it's a thriller. And it's every chapter is a thriller. I just yes. love them. So I, yeah, that's absolutely. My, that's okay. my thing. W- one thing I love about the Niners, they're a thriller. Right. So we, we appreciate them from just sheer entertainment and because we're covering the team. It was no other team you'd rather cover. But let's talk about them from like a football enthusiast perspective. I really admire their ability to draft and develop late round picks that people have no expectations for. And the way I kind of in- interpret the Niners is Kyle Shanahan's the king of the castle there. And he gets to pick whoever he wants. And I think sometimes early in the draft, he gets his mind made up. I want this guy, I want that guy, make it happen. And sometimes those are the picks that aren't so great. Like maybe Ty Davis Price this last year, the running back. So I think I kind of get the feeling in the Niners organization, there's a lot of good people who know what they're doing. And they're like, look, we're only going to get so many swings at this. We got to make this count. We're only going to get fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh round picks. We got to make this count. And often the picks that they make in those rounds are better than the guys they take in the in the beginning. So whatever, anytime the Niners have a bust, it's, it's like, it's okay, because they have some other guy you never heard of on the practice squad who's better and really good. I really admire, and that speaks to not just the good scouts and the good uh, people that don't get any love in the front office, but the position coaches too. They have really good position coaches. Name some of the players they've gotten in late rounds who are good. Well, Talanoa Hafunga is an all-pro safety. He was a fifth-round pick. Um, Diamador Lenore was starting. He was a fifth-round pick in the same draft. Jordan Mason was undrafted. Elijah Mitchell was a sixth round pick. Uh, geez. Um, George Kittle was a George Kittle was a fifth round pick. Brock Purdy was a seventh round pick. Fred Warner was a third round pick. 
I mean, if Trey Greenlaw was a fifth round pick, I, they really are very good at it. Yeah. Very good. And it's not, I really admire that. All right. What else do we like about the Niners? I would drill down a little bit on that and sure. say not only late round picks, but they always seem to have good running backs. Yeah. And they need him because they go through him, but they always seem like there's another one there. There's always yeah. a, who the hell is Jordan Mason? Oh, it doesn't matter. He's really good. He's yeah. better on the Niners than he was in college. In college, he went to Georgia Tech, and I think he lost his starting job. There was another guy there. He was always kind of fighting for playing time. Now he's like averaging six yards of carry in the NFL. It's like good job, Georgia Tech. <laughs> yeah, what I, and I'm saying is it's an endless supply yeah. of. Uh, of course, they need them, but it's an endless supply of. Um, running backs, and sometimes you don't even know where they get them from. But there's right. somebody over there that can really spot a running back, somebody over there who can really coach a running back, and their zone scheme is very uh, friendly to certain kinds of running backs. And it was the same with Mike Shanahan. Yeah, and what's interesting about that is, and Shanahan kind of pointed this out for the whole league, is running back is a very important position, obviously. It touches the ball more than anyone else other than the quarterback. Um, but you can get, you can find them. They're kind of a diamond. You can get them late. You can get really good running backs who will be the engine of your offense in the sixth round. And Mike Shanahan's been doing it. Kyle Shanahan's been doing it. That's why when they make these big, when, when, when they traded for Christian McCaffrey, for example, me and you were like, really? I mean, yeah, he's good, but you can find good running backs. You do it every year. But he was really good, Christian McCaffrey. Well, I, I would say I was skeptical at first when they got Christian McCaffrey. He's another a step beyond um, oh yeah my my feeling about him is if you run him up the middle and someone can get a hand on him you can knock him down because he's small but give him a bit of an opening and Iggy he's a genius uh, and yeah. it's so much fun to watch him make make people miss uh, I'm so glad they got him I haven't enjoyed just let me finish this I haven't enjoyed a player like him since Debo Samuel was really good and also with McCaffrey, I feel like what makes it gives him his value is that he's a receiver. He's like a wide receiver. You know, he, he he's a good running back, absolutely. But the value in the NFL, you can find good running backs. You can get guys who run the ball in the sixth round. You can't find receivers like that out of the backfield in the sixth round. That's really right. hard. And it makes him extremely valuable in a passing league. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I give him all the credit in the world for getting that guy. And you know what, Iggy? He strikes me as a serious person, I've never mm -hmm. met him, a serious person, a pro's pro. Absolutely. Like and I mean, Fred Warner. Fred Warner mm -hmm. is a pro's pro. Yes, I think he's absolutely. a pro's pro. Yeah, I would agree. Nick Bose is a pro's pro. Oh, God, yes. Nick yeah. Bose is a pro's pro. Yeah. He is, right? It's an interesting concept. I like that. I wouldn't necessarily say that about Debo. Okay, I'll name some other pro's pro. Jimmy Ward. Yep. Yep. Use check. Use check. Yep. Always in perfect shape. Yep. Um, I'm not. I wouldn't go there with Kittle. He, he's. He's. I could be wrong. He strikes me as very into himself, and he's one of these performers at the head of the parade. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. It's a bit yeah. of. A, yeah. He's a look at me guy. Big time. Trent, Trent Williams is a pros pro, except he may only be playing for himself. That's the ultimate, yeah, rub with him. So maybe not him. Yeah. But Bosa, God, yes. Yeah. Jimmy Ward, God, yes. And, yeah. you know, maybe Greenlaw. He did the stupid thing in that game, but maybe Greenlaw, too. You would know better about Greenlaw than I would. Yeah, I mean, he gets, you know, unnecessary roughness penalties, but that doesn't mean he's not a pro. It just means he, he's violent. You know, he, he's supposed to walk that line. It's a tough one. Anything else we like about the 49? I, I, I think there's more. I, how about their ability to churn out coaches? Oh, God. I mean, wow. Yeah. Well, first, Iggy, their ability to attract coaches and to yeah. spot coaches. Yeah. I would say, in my humble opinion, Kyle Shanahan is better at spotting coach talent than player talent. There's no question. You agree. It's like he can't miss with coaches. He, he can get guys who are good, who have experience, who have no experience. I mean, he can really spot it. Yeah, yeah. And Offense, defense, does, whatever. Sorry. Yes. And he, he doesn't seem to be threatened by a, a 
coaches with more experience. Anthony Lynn. Steve former Wilkes. head coach. Wilkes. Steve Wilkes. Um, again, uh, uh, my example is Mark Jackson. He was always threatened by any coach's sweat ability. And that was one among his many uh, sins as a head coach. Kyle wants, like Bill Walsh, wants the best. He wants the best and he gets the best. And you know, Iggy, that may be the thing I admire most uh, about him. Yeah, and let's let's go a step further. I mean, the NFL has had an issue getting hiring black coaches for a long yeah. time. They've been trying to fix it, but for whatever reason, owners just haven't been going for black coaches very much. They they try to do the Rooney Rule. There's all these things. Kyle Shanahan is responsible for more minority coaches than anyone. I mean, Robert Sala, D'Amico Ryan's, technically Mike McDaniel too. So he just put three out there in the last three years. So good for Kyle. And now he's got Anthony Lynn waiting. He's got Steve Wilkes uh, on deck. He's committed to really giving minority coaches opportunities. That's a great thing. I mean, who else has done that? Yeah. So in, in many ways, Kyle Shanahan is exemplary. He's able to spot coaching talent. He doesn't seem to be threatened by it. And he's very open to minority coaches. All of those things, I, I want to applaud him. Bravo, bravo. I can keep going. I, I do appreciate the culture that John Lynch has built and Kyle Shanahan compared to what Trent Balky was doing. Like that Trent Balky culture, guys were getting arrested all the time. He was the voice of the team and he couldn't really speak. It was a very clumsy, rinky-dink, um, morally flabby culture, I felt. And now with John Lynch there, you, the players don't get, I mean, there was Charles and Menehue, but for the most part, the players don't get in trouble and they're very gracious with their time with the media and they seem like a, like they really like each other and they're down. I don't know. I just, it, I kind of like the team. You like the guys, right? I like the team. I like the guys. Most of them. Yeah. And again, I don't know John Lynch anymore. I knew him as a young man. Um, I, I think he seems like an exemplary person. Uh, I don't know how much power he has. I'm not there. But boy, is he a good uh, face of a franchise. Yeah, I think players trust him, and they think they feel like he's a man of his word. I, th I don't know how they felt about Trent Balky. I think he, I don't know about that. And I think Trent Balky also kind of created this us against them mentality against the media. John Lynch doesn't do that. He's he was media. He gets it, and he. I think him and Kyle sort of tell most of the players, "Look, work with the media," because so many of the good players do. Trent Williams, Kyle Uzcheck. There's not this like paranoia that existed in the previous organization. Outwardly. You know, I'm, I'm not saying that Trent Balky is a bad guy. I mean, I got re along with him reasonably well. But, I mean, as the face of a franchise of the 49ers, yeah. he, was not, uh, of the, he was not of the caliber that you would expect someone to be leading the 49ers. Someone leading the 49ers, you're thinking of, uh, of Bill Walsh, Carmen Policy? John right? Lynch. John Lynch. John Lynch, John McVeigh. I yeah. mean, uh, uh, Balky uh, was not at that level. And I'll tell you what, I'm not sure that Jed is at that level, but at least Agreed. he keeps his mouth shut for Agreed. the most part now. <laughs> That's he been the best adjustment. His, yeah, he learned to keep his mouth shut. Because yeah. I'm not sure that he has the brains or the sophistication of John Lynch. John Lynch is a perfect voice of the team, face of the team, and I think he's more than that. And if he ever leaves the team to go back to uh, announcing – which I'm sure would pay him double what he's making now, that'll be a loss for the team. That would be a loss. Yeah. John Lynch. I don't, I don't think John Lynch, money is an issue with John Lynch. It's a good point. I think he comes a good from point. a rich family. So yeah. well, he's in it for the, for the competition. He wants, to, yeah. he wants yeah. to follow through. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? Uh, any more praise we want to give before we move on? Because we're, we're not trying to, we're not, we don't want to hold back. <laughs> okay. There's so uh, much we I like. So it is so much we like. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. Hold on. Hold on. I, I think I'm praised out. Yeah. The jerseys? They got nice jerseys. The name, the 49ers. It's a good name. It's regionally oh. specific. Hold on. 49ers, when you talk about great names of sports franchises, okay? Yeah. 49ers could be the best name in sports. Why? Regional, regionally specific, historically specific. Yes. It, it's a year of the gold rush. Yes. Um, it's, That's right. It's whimsical. Yeah. It's, it's a number. 
<laughs> yeah. It, it's, you know, the 76ers are way late. They came late. Yeah. That's true. Uh, believe me, they, they've yeah. copied what the Niners did. Oh, oh I think. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Because you don't know yeah. that. The 76ers. Yeah. No, it because Warriors, it was the Warriors, right? It was the Warriors. The Warriors. Yeah. Right, of and course, of course. Yeah. Right. So, no, the 49ers, it, there are other great names, by the way. The Dodgers is a great name. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I, the Giants is a good name. The Dodgers is a great name. The yeah, Giants is okay. It's okay. It's not that I, imaginative. Yeah. Yankees is a great name. Yeah, it is a great name. 49ers, I'll tell you you're right. I'll t- you're right. I'll tell you something like horseshit names. <laughs> okay. Cowboys. Yeah. Dallas Cowboys. I mean, Cowboys. On. Cowboys, right? Nice. Yeah. Obvious. Yeah. 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 Freaking obvious. Um Yeah. Also the Texans? That's the most that's, that's the best you could do for Houston. The Texans. Are you kidding? Yeah. It's like yeah. saying the Californians. It's pretty weak. It's weak. Yeah. It's pretty weak. Yeah. Also, also what about what about the Jets Mets stupid Nets thing going Jets, on in New Net, York? Nets. I know. What is that? The Nets? Oh, watch out for the Nets. Here they come. <laughs> yeah. They're going to yeah. trap us. Yeah. No, those okay. are, those are crummy names. 